Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 and Mark chapter 3 and verse 15 and I will share the word of God. The Bible says and when he had called his 12 disciples he gave them what? What did he give them? He gave them power over unclean spirits. Somebody shout and say I have power over unclean spirits. Now these unclean spirits are spirits that cause sickness. If you go to YouTube, I find that if I keep on recapping what, what, what I spoke, I took, take too much time. So I'll ask you to just go to Pastor Morris Gashero page on YouTube. You will find the cause of sickness according to the Bible. All right. Uh, I know that some, if somebody goes to the doctors and they get uh, samples, the doctors will come out with a name, scientific name, Latin name, Greek name. They will say, oh, you drank some water, you have salmonella typhi or whatever, the one that causes typhoid. typhoid. They, they will give it a name. But the Bible tells us it is a spirit of infirmity. So I, I have gi gi given a clear and simplified exposition, biblical exposition, scripture after scripture, of where sickness comes from and why God takes away sickness, gets rid of sickness. So unclean spirits are spirits that cause infirmity. And the Bible says to cast them out and to heal some sicknesses. What kind of sicknesses? All kinds of sickness. So we read in Matthew, don't go there, Matthew 4.23, that Jesus healed all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. And I have preached to you in this church to tell you that he gives it as he has it. He gives it as he has it in the same quality and the same quantity. I am come that you might have life in its abundance. When he gives you grace, he gives you overflowing grace. Whatever he gives, when he gave you life, he could not give you less than everlasting life or less than eternal life. Why? He gives it as he has it. So when he came and he was healing the sick, the Bible says he healed all kinds. He healed all kinds. Praise God. He healed all kinds. So now he has come to a place, he's giving his disciples power. Is he going to give them power over some kinds? Because he gives it as he has it. Are you getting my point? So the power to heal, and that's what I'm talking about, the power to heal or the power for healing, praise God, when he begins to give it, he's giving it to his disciples, he is not measuring it. He is not giving them power to heal a few sicknesses or some diseases. All right? He gave them power to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases or disease. Amen. Mark chapter 3 verse 15. The Bible says, and begin at verse 14. Then he appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have what? He he's called them to be with him and to send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to do what? And to cast out Demons, that is his intention. Praise God. 
So when we started this, we have captured a few very important realities, healing realities. And today we are going to ask ourselves, who is this that has been given a power to heal the sick? And the question is, his disciples. How many of you then are his disciples? Praise God. How many of you are his dis disciples? The Bible also tells us in Mark chapter 16, who are these who are supposed to be healing the sick, who have been given this power to heal the sick? Give me Mark 16 and verse 17. Can we read it together? One, two, go. And these signs will follow those who believe. And in my name, they will cast out. The, how many are those? Who, who are those? Those who believe. How many of you believe? So those are the ones who are being given the power to heal the sick. Those who believe. Because those who believe in his word are his disciples. Those who follow him are his disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Amen. So in his name, they cast out demons. And they will speak in with new tongues. How many of you speak in other tongues? And if you don't, you can, you can speak in a... Oh, stretch like you're happy too. Thank you. Amen. Go to the next. And they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly. All right. I was using this to pray during COVID. I was talking about supernatural immunization. All right. Even from infection. Supernatural immunization praying for people God I speak supernatural immunization because if poison can't hurt them even virus can't hurt them are you hearing me alright so they shall drink anything deadly and it will by no means they will lay hands on the sick and they will do what they will, that is why we lay hands on the sick. Because Jesus said we will lay hands on the sick. In fact, the only thing I've never used, seen Jesus using is oil. About clothes, people touch the hem of his garment and they got healed. Can give somebody a jacket and they get healed or a towel and they get healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now listen, the reason that why we've been taking time to teach these things is because there are people in different levels and experiences. There are people who have had a different teachings about healing. And for the last one month, I've been taking time to show you the Bible. And if you need the notes, Mike uh, and the media team can send you the notes for further study. To bring you to a place and understand what the Bible says. That sickness is not you paying a price. Sickness is not God disciplining you. Sickness is not God teaching you a lesson. Are you getting my point? Those are the wrong notions about healing or about sickness. And therefore people keep on postponing their healing because they are told that God will heal them in his time. And Jesus to Jesus, they brought multitudes. And there is not one of them he told, it's not your time. There is none of them he told you, he told, it's not your time. Your, your time will come later. Is there anyone? 
Is there any one of them that was told by, by, by Jesus, by Peter, by Paul, and all the apostles that God used to heal in the Bible, that you, uh, you're not going to be healed because Mungwa Jamaliza, ile, the lesson he's been teaching you. The lesson, your season of illness is not over yet. You have not graduated. Is there anyone? None. The Bible says the moment they were brought, they got healed. The moment they asked, they got healed. It is that that is, Jesus is the one that we follow. He is our model, not the imaginations of men who are trying. You know, I have prayed for people even here and they have not been healed. Some of them have prayed for them for years. They've not been healed. It is not for me to try and look for a theory and try to explain to them, no, no, no. I leave that to God. But there are people who have tried to create theories to explain that it was not her time. You know, God is still teaching him something. Seriously? Are you getting? Yeah, others talk about, you know, levels of, of this and levels of that. Okay? Me, I don't create those theories. Me, I pray for the sick. I teach the word. I pray for the sick. They get healed. If somebody doesn't walk in the reality of that, I don't try to look for a way of explaining. Because the way of people explaining is you don't have faith. You did not believe. Yet, the Bible says faith is a gift. If you have the faith to get saved, which is the greatest miracle? Let me ask you, which is the greatest miracle? Salvation. If you can get saved and you have faith that, I mean, and you are saved by faith, what is healing? Healing is a minor miracle. And I'm not belittling, you know, the, the, the pain. Are you getting? So sometimes you don't have faith. That is why if you go to the New Testament and we say New Testament is from the book of Acts, you go from the New Testament, you do not ask, you do not see anywhere where people are being told to believe. Especially believers. Are you getting? Yeah. And in fact, in the Old Testament, even during the times of Jesus, was the Old Testament, because the Old Testament started after Jesus died, after the blood was shed. When he saw them coming, it is not an assumption. He knew they are coming because they have faith. Are you getting? The only place Jesus had a problem healing the sick is his home country, where he grew up. People who knew him from childhood, that is the place he had an issue. He did not many miracles there because of familiarity. Are you getting my point? So my view and, and, and my deliberate and intentional goal is to bring you to a place where you have an understanding. I am telling you, when a reality is established in your heart, you will not be speaking words because you had a pastor speak. You will speak them because it has become real in you. You are not trial and error. You are not speaking to try. You're speaking what you know. And the best way to know is in the word of God. In a congregation like this, there are people of different growth phases and levels. And therefore, when you look at scripture, there are those that say, is there anyone sick among you? let him go to the elders or let him be taken to the elders. And the prayer of faith, whose faith? The faith of the elders, the faith of the people praying. So healing occurs, especially when somebody is disoriented, somebody is too sick, or somebody has not had the teaching 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ or somebody is a baby Christian, has just gotten saved, they depend a lot on the faith of the person praying. Are you getting? They depend a lot on the faith of the person praying. Children, young children, depend on the faith of the person who has brought them for prayer like their parent, or the faith of the person pray because maybe they have not gotten to a place of understanding are you following me now as you continue to grow and to be taught the word the way I have taught you you start to know that there is a life that lives inside of you you start to understand that the one who conquered sickness himself the one who carried infirmity, the one who bore sickness and disease, himself lives within you. Christ lives in you. Is that your testimony? He lives inside of you. Okay? So there are two things about a believer's healing experience. There is what he did by the fulfillment of scripture. I was reading Matthew at night today. I woke up to pray at night. And I was reading chapter 11. And the Bible says the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Meaning, John was the last Old Testament prophet. You see, so he told me, I got excited. He told me I had to give it to you. It's not in my whatever. But he, he, he spoke in that word, and he says the prophets and the law prophesied until a particular point. Beyond that point, they have no right to prophesy. Because the time of prophecy had come to an end, it's time for fulfillment. The fulfillment was Christ. So Christ did not come to prophesy the coming of healing. He did not come to prophesy the coming of salvation. He did not come to prophesy the coming of liberty or redemption or freedom. He was the freedom. He was the healing that was prophesied. So he came to fulfill. Thank you so much. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until, until John. After that is fulfillment. So me and you can ask ourselves, are we in that time where healing is still being prophesied or are we in that time where healing is being fulfilled? Please. This side. is being fulfilled. The Bible says he went. They brought multitudes. He healed them and it was fulfilled. That which was spoken of the prophet Isaiah himself bore our sicknesses and diseases. So even now, it's still a continuous fulfillment. And not just in healing, even in the experiences that you go through, it's, an exp it's, it's a continuous fulfillment. Your life is an unfolding of the things that God intended for his children. God intended for the new creation. God intended when God uh, sent his son to die on the cross, his intention was that those who would believe in his son would live a particular life. You have become the fulfillment of God's intention because now you have that life he wanted people to have. He who has the son has life. The Bible says we have come to know that this is the true God and eternal life. Now you expect that life to have an effect in your body. Are you getting? The Bible says the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead bites in you. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. That that spirit is the one that lives within you. Ask your neighbor which spirit do you have? So the Bible tells us which spirit we have. So why do you allow people to diagnose other spirits? Spirits of grandmothers and uncles and grandfathers, great-grandfathers. Spirit of the village. Hmm? 
The Bible tells you that the believer in Christ was one spirit. And you are not a spiritual zebra. You are not a spiritual mixture of spirits. You are not a spiritual cocktail. But you can have the spirit of Christ and be ignorant. And he who is ignorant shall suffer like he who has a curse. Ignorance is deadly. That is why Paul kept on telling the, 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 the people, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. I want you to know. I pray for knowledge because he knew lack of knowledge can nullify his efforts as a preacher. People can get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and live as if they are not born again. They can be blessed and live as if they are cursed because not because they are not blessed and not because they are cursed, but because they don't know. And that means my calling. That's my calling. He told me what? Make it what? That's what he sent me to do. It changed my entire approach to preaching. Kitambo, by now, this is the what? 15th minute. I'll be all over the place, screaming and shouting. But I had to tone down because sometimes you need to teach line upon line, precept upon precept, and then you shout later. Are you getting my point? Making it plain, telling the believer, it is not God who is the cause of sickness. It is not God who is the cause of this. In fact, God cannot provide a solution and then prevent you from enjoying the solution he has provided. It's self-defeating. There are things that people can accept as true, which can hinder their experience to the things that God has given them. And that is why it's important for us to fight the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith means you keep on believing even when the evidence is contrary. Even if the evidence, the, the environment is contrary. Are you getting? You believe and speak what you know is true until the evidence lines up. Are you getting? And that's very, very important. Praise God. So teaching is important because it determines what does this person believe. Praise God. So this, this person I'm talking to you about today has the life of God. Romans 8.11. What is this life of God supposed to do? But if the Spirit, give me in TPT alive, the Passion Translation. Yes, God raised Jesus to life. Since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you. Huh? He will also raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into you. Now listen, this word breathes life into you is continuous. So let me ask you something. When a believer becomes sick, does he still have the spirit of resurrection? When a spirit a believer goes to the doctor and they are given a, a diagnosis and they are told whatever it is that could be wrong with their body. Do, does that spirit of resurrection give us which other version? Give us um, Amplified Classic. Do they still have that life? That spirit that breathes life? Now listen. It is you or the words that are spoken to you, or how you use your faith that determines which spirit prevails. By the word of God, remember he says, these words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. Don't take them as mere words. They are spirit and they are life. A believer whose mentality, whose thinking, whose speech, has been formed and has been cultured, let me use that word, by the word of God, 
will not speak the symptoms. Will not speak what that spirit of infirmity is doing. But will speak what they know that this spirit that is breathing life into them is doing. When you get, you know there is this thing you're fighting. Read material that strengthens what you believe. And that you can get people, if you listen to me, there's a way I teach healing. Somebody else teaches different, you know. So you, you get different w- ways that you can speak. Are you getting? Yeah, it gives you the things you can talk about. Amen. And then these materials themselves carry an anointing. Surround yourself. Listen to what it is that ministers to that area of your need. Listen to materials about healing. When you go out there to speak to somebody, in fact, there's a place where they can start to tell you what the doctor said. You say, Unajua, Mungu pia ana maneno yake amesema. You cut it short because it can interfere with your believing. Because if this person has already is already thinking how hard, how impossible, see, gee, what fraction of people make it? What? That's not what you do. So you have to know how to step in and tell them what the word of God says. Minister to the word. So when you're going to pray for the sick, yeah, there are those that you just rush and lay hands on. But there are those that you take moments. You assure them. There are people who think that there is a cup they are drinking. If God wanted to call you home, if your job is done, does he have to subject his beloved children to years of pain? Sickness is evil because of the way it invades the temple. Because of the effect it has on the temple that has been purchased. Your body is the temple. That's what I'm talking about. Praise God. And God is not glorified that you go, opened up, closed, then you go. And that is why he himself, when he heals, he does not leave a scar. He doesn't leave a scar. Are you getting? And I'm not against medical science. He can heal through medical science. He can do that. But what about it if it fails? What about when the doctor says we have come to the end of ourselves? And do we have to go the entire length of medical science for a person to turn to God and say, okay, wameshindwa India, wameshindwa, sijui wapi, where else do people go? Wawa wameshindwa, sasa nimekuja. Is that what we do? No. We go immediately or turn to the one who created the body, even with the slightest uh, of symptoms. We say, in the name of Jesus, I refuse headache even for a minute. Praise God. Am I talking to somebody? Then there are those that get healed through the word. As they get to that place of sunesis, understanding when it dawns upon their hearts when they understand the bible says jesus was preaching and the power of god was present to heal they got healed as jesus was preaching there are people here in this church who have gotten healed not because of we laid hands but even as the word praise god Hallelujah. Now listen, the human body or the person was created to function and thrive in intimacy or close fellowship with God. The life of the body comes from the breath of the Spirit of God. I've given you this example before. That if you take clay... You form it in the shape of a beautiful lady or beautiful gentleman. You cannot call that clay man. That's what God did in the garden. He scooped some soil and formed it and fashioned it. But that was not yet man. 
it was still dust. Are you getting? It is the time that he breathed into that dust that the heart started to beat, the blood started to flow, the kidneys were given their functions at the breath of the Almighty. The eyes started to see when God breathed into them. Are you getting? So everything that happens within you received its function through the breath of God. Are you hearing me? So he did not breathe life and then start to say, oh, eyes blink, ears hear. No, 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 no. That same breath, give every part of your body, including your womb, its function. And it's so intricate. It is so delicate that every cell knows where they are supposed to go. Every cell knows where they are supposed to go when they are created, when they are produced. Every cell of your body has received its assignment by the breath of God. Where they are supposed to go. Just like the sun, when he says, let there be light, and they say he set the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. There has never been confusion. The moon rises at its time the sun sets at its time. He has never repeated that command. Has he? He has never. The same thing, there is a command that was given to your body. At the breath of God, Job says, the breath of the Almighty giveth me life. And when that part of the body fails to function the way it's supposed to, when the blood is not at the level it's supposed to be. That same spirit, not from outside, from within. Some people are about to cause confusions in hospitals. This person came critically ill, supposed to go through a surgery, has been discharged without surgery, and yet the report says they are perfect. What happened? Was there a secret surgery? Was there a treatment that was not recorded? That's not in the files. In between is the miracle of God. Are you hearing me? Praise God. So the believer in Jesus Christ lives by that life. You are not born according to the wills, the will of bloods. John chapter 1. For those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave them the power to be called or to become the children of God. Amen. Verse 13, read the next verse. It says what? We owe, the, who owe their birth, can we read it together? One to go. Who owe their birth, neither to blood, nor to the will of the flesh, that is of physical impulse, not to the will of man, that is of a natural father, but to God. They are born of God. Somebody say, I am born of God. Meaning there is these people called the twice born men. Men, who are be men and women who are born twice, born again. The first birth is a man and a father. They get together and they say, we want a baby. That's their will. Let's get married, we want a baby, that's okay. But this second one has nothing to do with your father, has nothing to do with blood, has, not, has nothing to do with the will of man. It is God himself, the will of God himself. Now, there is this one who was born naturally by their father. And there is this one who is born of the spirit, by the will of God, born of God. Who prevails in a situation of sickness? Who prevails? There is this one who is connected to human genealogy. And there is this one who is born of God. There is this one who has grandfathers and grandmothers and aunties who have all kinds of situations, if, if, the way people say. But there is also this one 
The Bible says that he's born of God and the spirit of God lives in them and the spirit of God breathes life continuously in them. In the case of a situation of disease, who prevails? The one who's been fed. The one you are conscious of. The, more, the one you are more conscious of. If you are so more conscious about Kikuyu tradition, Kikuyu this, Kikuyu that, don't be surprised if you start to go through issues like Kikuyu or Kamba. But he who is from above is above. And this is a scripture I would like you to read today. Please and don't never forget it. That if you bore likeness to the one who is earthly, there are two men, two kinds of men, and you have to choose. You can't be both. You have to choose. He says, one of them is from the earth and is earthly. All right? And he speaks of the things of the earth, affected by the things of the earth. His reality is regulated by what is happening on the earth. Oh, beautiful. Amen. But, as the man, or oh, give me verse 47, but there is another man that is called the heavenly man. The man who is from heaven. Are you getting me? The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. These are called Adamic curses. Seven Adamic curses. And as is the heavenly man, the Lord Jesus Christ, as is the Lord Jesus Christ, as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. Who are they that are heavenly? There are people still loading. Let me just ask you. You choose. Are you of the dust? Or are you heavenly? Yeah, you are born of heavenly origin. Not earthly mortal origin. The book of Peter says that you've been born again. Not of a mortal or earthly origin, but of an origin that is from above, heavenly. But is the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Hallelujah. So what is it today that gives you life? What is it that causes you to function? Having been born, give me that in Tipitita, the Passion Translation. The Passion is good if you can get a copy. For through the eternal and living word of God, you have been born again. And this seed that he planted within you can never be destroyed, but will live and grow inside of you forever. Does that make sense? You are a bearer of a seed. The seed you've been born by or born through. Are you getting me? Let's continue. So, God gave function to your body by the breath. How is it possible? Jesus was conceived purely by the Spirit of God. The same spirit that came on that dust and the dust got life entered Mary and Mary had a baby. Just like that. Mary had a baby. It's a miracle that will not be repeated. So nobody should come and tell us, Pastor, I don't know what happened. All the other babies, you know what happened. <laughs> Are you getting? So this is the only one. It's called the immaculate birth. All right? That spirit, by 
which he was conceived is the same spirit by which we are born. Somebody say, I'm born of the spirit. You know, sometimes he say, and this is how I, I have to make it plain. And he hear, oh, the whole, Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and they raised the dead. And then, 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 then you come to yourself and you think that we are talking about different spirits. Are you getting me? The way if we start to dish mandazis here, I can only pick one mandazi for each. But can you imagine every one of you gets the same mandazi? The, the, the same one. Are you getting me? So stop thinking that the, the, there's a spirit that conceived Christ, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the spirit who was on the apostles, and then the spirit that is in me. Is the same? Have you received another? Is there another? Then this is to tell you that the same way he has worked over others, if you, your mind receives understanding, he will work in you. He will work in you. Are you hearing me? <laughs> he will work in you. Praise the name of Jesus. So when the organs of the body or parts of the body are failing, that same spirit that gives function can restore function. That same spirit that caused blood to flow can multiply blood. And then there are those who live by the word. How far does the, blood, the word of God work? Where does the word of God reach? The Bible says in Hebrews, he says the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the dividing of the soul, if the problem has to do with the soul, and spirit, if the issue is spirit, all right, then it comes to the body. The body says, the bone. And the marrow. So it says, the deepest, most inner point of a human being is spirit. Are you getting? That, that's the inner man. That's the hidden man. That's your, 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 the essence of you. That's who you are. That's the deepest. Are you getting? But the Bible says the word reaches there. When you come to this body, what is the farthest point, the most inner point of the human body? Is the marrow. Is hidden within the bone. But as the word is going forth the way I'm speaking to you, now, now it's going to the spirit, it's going to the soul, it's going to the bones, it's going to the marrow. That deepest point not skin, skin is surface. It goes to the marrow. He is able to return function. He is able to return. He said, my servant is at home paralyzed. He has legs which are not working. Cannot carry him. Pray for him. And the Bible says, at the word of the master, the legs which had lost its function, they started to function properly. Hallelujah, the womb that was not able to conceive can conceive today and will conceive today. The word of God can clear the cyst. The word of God can clear the swelling in the tubes, the blockages in the ovaries. The, 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 the word of God can deal with potency. It can give man power. God is expecting a godly offspring. He will give function to whatever needs to function. Because many times when we pray about children, we pray for women who are barren. But in this service, men who need to have children will have children. Men who need to receive man power will get man power. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The sperm count will be right. Yeah. He gives function. Praise the name of Jesus. You've noticed I've started to shout. Eh? He gives function. Praise the name of Jesus. 
He gives function. Let me give you in two minutes where that power comes from. Praise God. Where does God or where does Jesus give the legal right to heal the sick? When he was walking on the earth, he's a faith and he is God, so he has power. But now, after his death and resurrection, where is that legal? Where is that authority? Because authority has to be legal. The first authority we see is that he became the curse. He became the curse. Remember, whatever he delivered us from, he first became. Somebody shout and say, he became the curse. Number two, he destroyed the power of death. So by giving you the power first, he destroys the power of death. So when you say you go cast out devils, it's because he has disarmed principalities. Oh God, it's because he has made a public spectacle over them. It's because he has stripped them of their power. They said for this reason, the son of God was manifested that he may destroy all the powers of the devil. Did he succeed or did he fail? Then the power of the devil remains destroyed. Even now, 2024, July, the power of the devil is destroyed. Hallelujah. He destroyed. Hebrews 2.14b. He says that through death, through death he might destroy the power of death of the one. He might destroy he who had the power of death. Yeah. That through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. He destroyed. Did he destroy or not? He does. I told you the enemy is defeated. What he has left in place is a system. It's a system called the world. And those who are born of God overcome the world. They overcome. And this is the victory that we have. That is our faith. Hallelujah. That is your faith. Somebody say, I'm an overcomer. Shout again and say, I'm an overcomer. Give me that verse in TPT. I'm an overcomer. Hebrews 12, 14b, in the Passion Translation, Hebrews, quickly. The second one, oh man, and this is connected to what I'm talking about here. He says, he did this so that he could experience death and annihilate, annihilate the effects of the intimidating accuser who holds against us the power of death. He's destroyed it. Hey, Hallelujah. He has destroyed it. The power, the one who had the power, that has been destroyed. That is why you can raise the dead. Oh, that's why you can raise the dead. That is why the dead can come back to life. If Jesus did not destroy that power, oh, death, where is your sting? If he did not destroy it, then we have no hope of ever, of ever rising from the dead. But because of what Jesus did, now the dead are raised. Praise God, he has broken the mastery over Satan. The Bible says in Isaiah, can the captive of the tyrant, can the captive of a mighty man be delivered? That is why he says, can the captive of a mighty man, can the captive of a dictator, can the captive of a tyrant be delivered? And the question is answered emphatically that yes, even the captive of the tyrant can be delivered. For the Bible says, I will fight those who have fought against you. And therefore Jesus comes as the captain of our salvation to take our place like David took the place of Israel and face this judgment and Goliath and Jesus faced sickness for us he faced sin for us he faced death for us he became the curse for us and we were delivered from the tyrant we were delivered from that strong captive we were delivered from the one who had taken us as captive and become our master the Bible says the whole world falls under the sway of the evil one the whole world, 
that me and you when we were dead in our trespasses we followed the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air we were his puppets he coughed and we did it he suggested and we did it we served him oh, some of you drank overnight you you drank you did things overnight you served the devil with so much you used your money to serve the devil you went and took loan and you went and said let to come to leave you and you shot the enemy with your money because you are under the influence you are under the mastery you are under the dominion but when Jesus came he broke the dominion he broke the influence he broke the mastery he is no longer our master we are his master we command him and he goes we cast devils and they leave we speak to sicknesses and they leave somebody shout and say yes he has broken the mastery I told you before and I'm going to tell you again and now I am putting it in a book I'm in conversation with a publisher books are starting to come like this I hope you're ready are you ready? are you ready to read those books? we can put it in a book praise God I'm excited what my master did oh I'm excited I talked to him at night conversation I wasn't praying at you no I was saying God me naenda kuambia kila ulifanya naenda kuambia kile kifo chako kilifanya and somebody is hearing me here today somebody is hearing me that that strong tyrant has no longer mastery he's not a master he has no claim over your body it has been bought it has been purchased your soul has been ransomed it has been paid for it has been redeemed what part of you belongs to satan what part of you was not dealt with what part of you was not redeemed what part of you your organs your kidneys your liver your every part of you when when Jesus when God sent Moses to Egypt they tried to bargain with Moses he said no you go your women and your children go and worship leave your cows Moses got the revelation he came back to Pharaoh he says we are not leaving even a hoof even a hoof we are not living even a hoof because he said me my wife my children my cows and their hooves belong to god are you hearing me what a part of you does not belong to god show me what part of you does not belong to him every part of your body has become a member of Christ it has been bought and today if it belongs to Jesus i call it into alignment it begins to function the insulin level the hormones the enzymes the acidity level the blood level whatever it is comes to its level now in the name of Jesus why because it has been paid for he, he died for it. It. He died for it. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. He bore sickness and disease. He carried. Hallelujah. Somebody say I was healed. Oh say it again I can't believe it. Say I was healed. Shout it again and say I was healed. Walk in that consciousness. Can somebody ever convince you that you are not holy spirit filled? Who can convince you today Pastor Simeon that you are not healed? So he gives us the work to preach the gospel, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead in the same sentence. The same command, the same sentence. But some smart preacher comes and separates the sentences and we are only left with preach the gospel are you hearing me they are not talking about casting out devils they are not talking about healing the sick they are not talking about raising the dead i pray for cripples i pray for people with all kinds of sicknesses because i have faith you how will you know you can 
How will you know the seeker race? How will you know if you don't stretch your hand? Are you hearing me? He is a complete savior. He saves the body. He saves the soul. He saves the spirit. He is a, let us not separate it. He is the one, the one who has redeemed your soul. He's the one who has brought to life your spirit. He's the one who gives life to your body. There is nothing less than that. I refuse to, to, to accept a, 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 a Christ that is less than that. How can somebody have a dead lung? They want to, uh, to, uh, to get extracted from our body. And then it starts to breathe. And then it starts to have life. And then it starts to grow. And then you convince them it is a fake miracle. Church in JCC, we have to arise above the spirit of this age. It is a spirit that mocks God. It is a spirit that is trying to suggest that cripples cannot walk. That the blind cannot see. That if any blind one sees, it's fake. The devil is a liar. In this church, JCC, we have had genuine miracles. How can tell, they tell us that Jesus does not heal anymore? We have to have the conviction that goes above the spirit of this age. They are trying to make us shy with our testimonies. They are trying to make us shy so that we don't pray for the sick. They are, but I am here today to summon an army. Those who are going to the bus stop, you say that God heals. Watch our checker come out on a checker. The day a cripple will stand, they will not laugh anymore. The day the dead are raised, they will not laugh anymore. When they come to your office, pray for them. When they come to your homes, pray for them. When you go to their houses, pray for them because the God that saves is the God that heals. Hallelujah. How many people are with me? If you're with me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm saying if you're with me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You pray for the first one. If they don't get healed, pray for the next one. If they don't get healed, pray for the third one. If they don't get healed, pray for the fourth one. Somewhere down the line, you will hear a scream. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. We are not called to make a partial witness of Christ. We are not called to make speeches. We are not public speakers. We are not here to bear an empty witness. We are here to pray bear a believable witness. And today I release an impartation. If you're here, you have the gifts of healing. I command them to reawaken. If you're here oh, and you have a burden and a compassion for the sick, go and pray for the sick. Let us fill our city with the move of God. Let us fill our city with signs and wonders and miracles. People keep on talking about revival. There is no revival that happens without God putting his fingerprint in the lives of men. It's not about us coming to pray and pray and pray and pray and leave empty. No, 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 no. It's not about you coming to a sermon and coming to a church service like this and you clap and you shout and you say amen and then you leave empty. No, if the kidney had an issue, it is corrected. If the heart had a problem, it is corrected. If the tumor had an issue, it is corrected. If the issue was in your ovaries and in your fallopian tubes and in your cervix and in the womb it is corrected if the issue was in the head wherever the issue was the healing power of God I is able to correct it now somebody shout and say yeah, yeah.